Ah, it's autumn. The weather is starting to cool, and I'm excited to sit by the fire. So let's talk about fire-type moves in Pokémon! How do they work? Let's explain every fire-type move, what it does, and how it might just function, scientifically speaking. But first, I just know that a lot of these moves are scientifically samey. I mean, it's fire. It hurts because it's fire. So before we get into the specifics of individual moves, let's explain why fire hurt. Right after the intro. Yo, check me out! I'm a whole party of awesome heroes and one of over 10 million players of today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. A beautiful looking free-to-play turn-based RPG game for iOS and Android. Just look at my body right now and tell me that these champion designs aren't awesome. I mean, just check out the amazing graphics and details on these champions. And, in Raid, you have the ability to personally customize and choose the artifacts and design a unique mastery build for each one of them. This game is growing super fast and there is a new Faction Wars feature. It just came out. People love this game, which is apparent by its 300,000 plus reviews, which give it an almost perfect score on the Play Store. And if you haven't given Raid a try before, now's the time. Because there's a new awesome rewards program for new players, get a new daily login reward for the first 90 days in the game! So, go to the description, click on those special links, and you'll also get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as a part of the new player program to start your journey. Videos like these are only possible thanks to sponsors, so a big thanks to Raid Shadow Legends. Link below. Typically, fire comes from a chemical reaction between oxygen in the atmosphere and some sort of fuel, like wood or gas. Though of course, wood and gasoline don't spontaneously catch on fire just because they're surrounded by oxygen. <laughs> My goodness, could you imagine? For the combustion reaction to happen, you have to heat the fuel to its ignition temperature, usually by just showing it some other fire with a lighter or spark, but there are other means as well. So that's how you get fire, but like, why does it hurt? I mean, what makes a burn be pain. How would fire relate to Pokemon taking damage? Well, in actuality, fire itself doesn't need to be involved. Just the heat hurts. And fire just happens to be hot, and this heat, when against our bodies, denatures the proteins that our tissues are made of, basically meaning that it alters us on a molecular level, basically making our proteins a soup instead of a nice, sproingy mass. If the body is incapable of restoring the damaged tissue to normal physiological operation, then this is known as a burn. For those of you that don't know what a burn is, other than the status effect in Pokemon, a burn is where our outer layer of skin is damaged either beyond repair or severely. There are quite a few types of burns as well. First degree burns are like a sunburn. Second degree burns will normally see blisters form. These are commonly obtained from touching hot pans or boiling water for too long. Then third degree burns are where the outer layer of flesh is completely damaged and some lower levels of skin as well. These sometimes can be very large and require medical skin grafting to help repair. Scarring is guaranteed with these. And then there's fourth degree burns where flesh almost crisps. Basically, like a hot dog that's so black and shriveled not even a dog would eat it. And then, worst of all, there's the almighty internet burn. These ones are deadly. Better watch out for those YouTube comments. Also, hey, here's your invitation. Give me your best burn in the comments. Hold nothing back. But back to the burns effect on the body. Once your skin is burned, there is a severe risk of infection, as the body's normal skin barrier doesn't keep out the bacteria that thrive on consuming the nutrients of dead tissue. Plus, the skin underneath that is now exposed is fresh and new and not fully formed yet, so it's rather sensitive, and sometimes nerve endings can be exposed and burned. So obviously, because heat can cause so much damage, our bodies are keen on sending signals of pain to the brain so that we stop touching the hot thing. So this is why fire attacks hurt. Now then, the moves. Ember is perhaps the simplest fire type move, hence many lower level firemons knowing it. It's a simple little spit up of fire. Not quite a whole flame, but the start of one. It explains its low chance of causing burn, and its Japanese name, translating to spark. It's just a little spark, like when you're trying to start a fire, or when a fire is just about dead. It's weak, faint, but it's there. Flamethrower is easily the most iconic fire type attack. It's your classical fire breathing monster fire breath and obviously fire hurts. Heat wave is essentially the same, but without the fire. Rather, it's just really 
really, really hot air being breathed. But unlike flamethrower, this attack spreads out to hit multiple opponents. You see, flamethrowers work essentially by launching highly flammable fuel like a hose, and then catching that fuel on fire as it moves across a little flame. It's alright to assume that this is how a lot of the Pokemon breathe fire too. But this of course means the attack is concentrated in one area. But without the actual flame, like if you're just breathing hot air, that air wants to spread out, like in a cone shape, so it does so with Heat Wave, and heat hurts. Fire Blast is another sort of flamethrower attack, but just one big burst. And somehow in the shape of the Japanese kanji for fire, the name of the move in Japanese, Daimonji, refers to the Daimonji Festival, where several giant bonfires in the same shape are lit. Neat. Flame Burst is basically the same move, but without the gimmick. Blue Flare is a signature move of Reshiram, and basically is just a really, really powerful version of Flamethrower. But does Blue Fire necessarily mean stronger? What's going on here? Really, a better question is, why is Hotter Fire bluer than Cooler Fire? Funnily enough, a red or yellow flame is the weakest in terms of heat. Though, of course, at the same time, this isn't always the case. Some fuels just happen to burn at different light frequencies. That's why there's even green and purple fires. But Generally speaking, when using normal fuels like oxygen or propane, the flame burns red on the outside and hotter and blue on the interior. Meaning, this is a more complete burn. The fuel is being used all the way, creating the blue flame in the middle. So blue can mean hotter fire, but doesn't necessarily mean that. Fusion Flare is the other signature move of Rushy Ram and White Q Ram. Ultimately, it's just another big fireball, just like those other fire blast moves from before. Fire hurts. But if it's used right after Fusion Bolt from Zekrom, its power doubles. Lightning is also super duper hot and causes burns, so this combo is essentially burning the opponent, and then burning them again. And anyone who's gotten a burn can tell you that burns get super sensitive to heat, and thus hurt much worse, even just under warm water. Thus, the second burn, hurting even more, double the damage. And the way this move functions is similar in concept to Fire Pledge. On its own, the attack just summons a column of fire on the opponent. But if it's used right after Grass Pledge, the attack power doubles, and it hits multiple targets. The idea is that it's burning all of the brush that the Grass Pledge moved through all around the battlefield. Thus, the fire spreads. When it comes to forest fires, this underbrush can be detrimental. It makes the fires spread significantly faster, a very dangerous and very bad thing. My father-in-law has been a California firefighter for 40 years, and he's told me that back in the day, the brush wasn't as much of an issue, but since then, environmental Analysts have passed a bunch of laws that make clearing it a huge hassle. It's messing with nature! And so it's basically not an option for them most of the time. And then they wonder why California forest fires are so dang bad. It's reached a point where many firefighters will get the fire just under control, but then let it continue burning. Thus, the fire clears the underbrush for them. It's a loophole, making the whole area safer for years to come. Thankfully, these laws have been loosening up over the last few years, though. All it took was the loss of several lives and thousands of homes in my hometown. <laughs> Silly environmentalists putting emotion and opinion over logic and facts. Where was I? Right. Fiery Dance is the signature move of Volcarona. My favorite. And it has Volcarona do a dance, summoning a vortex of flame around it, and then using its wings to send that vortex over to the opponent. Obviously, causing pain because heat hurts. This, along with Fire Spin, the much lamer version of the move, are examples of a fiery vortex, which happen because of windy updrafts. Sort of like how, you know, in Breath of the Wild, you can light the grass on fire and then use that to parachute up because you get lit. However, unlike that unrealistic power, fire whirls or fire devils are caused by the burning of the oxygen in the fire. Basically, the fire is creating its own wind that swirls into itself, feeding the fire. It just so happens that the fire gets caught up in its own wind that it's creating and it's just a big loop, both literally and figuratively. It's a demented twister. And fun fact, the internal spin of a fire whirl can get up to 1000 degrees centigrade. And remember, heat hurts. Incinerate, also known as complete burn in Japanese, is just another move that involves an intense flame. But like an incinerator to trash, this move has the added effect of burning up and incinerating the opponent's berry, if they're holding one anyway. Inferno, also known as purgatory in Japanese, Jeez. has the user engulf the area around the opponent in flames. They get burned and thus put into pain. The name Purgatory is a reference to 
Well, purgatory. There are all sorts of different beliefs on what purgatory is, but one of these is a place where your sinful soul gets purified by fire. And since we're talking about souls, Will-O-Wisp, also known as Ghost Fire. There are many interpretations of these things found throughout various cultures all around the world, but they are all the same at their core. It's a ghostly flame, and one that doesn't necessarily catch things on fire. So no initial pain, but they are capable of causing burns, hence that being what the move does in Pokemon. It doesn't hurt the opponent initially, but it's a guaranteed burn. Mystical Fire was the signature move of Delphox until they later gave it to Miss Magius. Nothing's really different about it besides its source, I guess. The game describes it as a special fire, and considering the two Pokemon that learn it, well, it's easy to say that it's pyromancy, which is the branch of magic regarding the element of fire. Sacred Fire was once the signature move of Ho-Oh, where it engulfs the opponent in a mystical blue flame. Likely blue due to the spiritual, ghostly side of it, rather than it being super hot, but still, heat hurts. Sunny Day could also be chalked up to pyromancy, I suppose. It makes the weather sunny for a while. The user intensifies the sun. So, uh... <laughs> This power is pretty intense. I mean, changing the weather is one thing, but making the sun itself stronger? The sun is so far away! Clearly it can't be doing that. Rather, it, it, it must be putting some sort of barrier around the battlefield after clearing any clouds. This barrier works sort of like a magnifying glass, concentrating the sunlight into the battle zone. That's the only explanation I can really come up with. You could also say it's sort of like making a miniature global warming greenhouse gas effect thing. Yeah, it's burning a bunch of carbon, putting it up into the atmosphere, but just around the battlefield, so the sunlight comes in and just bounces around instead of leaving. It's, it's magic. So, uh... Let's do some simple moves next. Blaze Kick has the user kick with a fiery foot. Heat Hurts. Fire Punch has the user punch with a fiery fist. Heat Hurts. Fire Fang has the user bite with fire in its mouth. Heat Hurts. Fire Wheel has the user coat itself in flames and charge roll into the opponent. Heat Hurts. Flare Blitz is the same thing, basically, but without the rolling. And it's also much harder, so the user gets hurt too. Sizzly Slide is also basically the same thing, but it's what your partner Eevee does. And then Flame Charge is, you guessed it, it's the same thing. But again, this time it has a chance of raising the user's speed stat, which is referenced by the Japanese name of the move, Nitro Charge. Nitrous Oxide is what racers often inject into their fuel as it burns even better than air. It's basically just hardcore oxygen for the fiery engine. Heat Crash is the signal signature move of the Embor line, and on the surface, it's the same as the previous moves too. Embor gets all hot and bothered and then slams into the opponent, but this time, weight is calculated into the damage. The heavier Embor is compared to its target, the more damage the move does. It's essentially body slamming them while also glowing red with heat. V-Create, or V-Generate in Japanese, has the user, normally Victini, generate a massive fiery V on its head, and then ram the opponent with it. It's super powerful, but causes its stats to lower because it burned up some of its poor ears. They're singed. Poor thing. Searing Shot, also known as Flame Bomb, is the signature move of Victini. And it essentially turns itself into a bomb of fire that explodes flames everywhere, burning everything around it. <laughs> and fire hurts. Fire Lash is the signature move of Heatmore. Why does this thing get its own move? It basically balrogs all over the place with a fire whip, except since it's a fire-breathing anteater, the whip is its tongue. Fire hurts. Mind Blown is the signature move of Blacephalon, the lamest Ultra Beast. It blows up its own head, which is basically a firework ball, and thus it also hurts itself. Fireworks are pretty, and explode with fire, and fire hurts. Shell Trap is the signature move of Turtonator. Turtonator's shell functions very similarly to a landmine. You step on it, it explodes. So here, if you attack Turtonator's shell physically, you get a fiery explosion sent right back into your face. Burn Up is extremely intense. The user essentially takes all, and I mean all, of the fire in its fiery body to launch an attack. And after using it, the user will no longer be fire type. Yeah, even if that means they would become typeless, which has its pros and cons. For one, the user wouldn't have to worry about water type attacks anymore. No more weaknesses. But it also doesn't get stab bonuses with its own fire type attacks anymore. So... It's a mixed bag. This is essentially a reference to the fact that fire needs fuel to burn. No fuel, 
No fire. Once all the fuel is spent, the fire goes away. It's been burnt up. This does bring up a lot of questions though. Like, uh, how is typeless a type? And since it is, why haven't they used it as a gimmicky type for Amon yet? Also, what does this mean for the fire type Pokemon? What makes them fire type if they can put that out? Because they aren't becoming normal type, they're just losing fire type. Eh. What? Sounds like something to cover in another video. So many questions. Moving on. Blast Burn is insanely powerful and can only be taught to fully evolved fire type starter Pokemon by a move tutor. It's that advanced. Which seems a bit silly, since the move is just summoning forth an eruption of flames from all over its body in an explosion. <laughs> no big deal. But actually, is big deal. The user has to rest on the next turn to sort of recharge. I mean, they basically drained their fire reserves. Not entirely, since they're still fire type. And then there's Overheat, which is just Blast Burn's little sister of a move. Lava Plume. Oh man, this brings in more questions. Lava is molten rock, and it's in the ground. So arguably, these next moves should totally be dual typed moves like Flying Press. They could be Fire Rock or Fire Ground. But I guess just fire makes the most sense for now. I mean, lava hurts you the same way that fire does. It's hot and heat hurts. Lava Plume is described as an inferno of scarlet flames washes over all of the Pokemon in battle. It may also inflict burns. Wait, so is it even lava? Well, eruption sure is. The Pokemon erupts with explosive fury. This move is what Camerupt is all about, spewing hot lava, so hot that it hurts because heat hurts. Magma Storm, the signature move of Heatran, is also intense. A maelstrom of flame bursts from the ground under the opponent, causing ouch. Ooh. Ooh, 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 now this is exciting. This is the first Max move we're covering. The moves from Dynamaxed Pokemon, since they were recently revealed and all. Max Flare is, well, really, it's just Flamethrower again, but big. That's sort of what the whole gimmick is. It's just regular battles, but big. And lastly, Inferno Overdrive, the fire type Z move. It's described as the user breathes a stream of intense fire toward the target with the full force of its Z power. Ah, so, well, what you see is what you get. Nothing really special, it's just extra a lot of an extra hot. And well, heat hurts. Thanks for watching, and as always, remember, only you can prevent wildfires, and only you can use your noggin.